Hello, this is Jen. Thank you very much for coming on and watching my tutorial. So right here, <clears throat> I had taken a board and I had used my leftover paint to paint the background and I let it dry. So that's a paint project from the day before. And I'm just showing you um, that I used a regular flat brush to put the paint down. And then I used a palette knife to put the highlights on it. It looks like I used um, metallic purple on the outside of it. So the next thing I'm going to show you is um, what's really important. A lot of times I use a watercolor pencil to trace the thing that I'm going to paint on there. The watercolor pencils are really good because they'll dissolve in the background and you don't need to worry about going back and erasing it. So right now, go ahead and draw your uh, heart on there. I'm just showing you what paint I used on there. So go ahead and get your background ready. Let it dry. Pause the video till it's dry and then come back and draw a rough rough hearts on there. Um, it doesn't really matter how you draw it or where you draw it, just as so it looks like a heart and it's abstract, so it doesn't need to be perfect at all. And you can put your hearts wherever you want them. So go ahead and um, sketch out something that you like and you can go through and sketch it and then erase it. It just doesn't matter. It's um, so freeing to do it this way. So there I am sketching it. And feel free to um, pause this video and catch up. I kind of go through this pretty quickly. Now for my palette, um, for palette knife painting, I do use, um, I recycle my Amazon boxes or any kind of paper, hard paper or uh, cardboard I put on a palette. It's off camera right now, but I'm loading up my palette with different paints that I want to use. Um, oh wait, there we go. You can, you can see my palette right there. So um, what I'm doing is I'm putting a mix of um, Arteza paint on there and I'm putting some metallic paint on there but basically you want to look at your color wheel and find some really brilliant colors and um, what stands out a lot is um, opposite on the color wheel and that'll make your painting really stand out. Now that big bottle I just had is a craft quality paint that you could get anywhere from the dollar store all the way to Michaels and Hobby Lobby. Um, Amazon has those too, but um, Arteza paint, the ones in the little bottles that are on the bottom of your screen there, um, those are really thick, really, really good for um, palette knife painting. The ones that are a little more fluid are the craft quality. Um, you may want to use those at first. They're a little bit easier as far as flow to use when you're first starting out with palette knife painting. And um, another tip I'm going to share with you is that um, try not to mix it too much on your palette when you're doing uh, palette knife painting. It comes out so nice. Your colors come out so pure and nice when you when you don't uh, mix them on your palette. Mix it on the on your project. I mean, you could do a little bit of mixing, but the more you mix it, the the more it, it's going to turn out maybe a little muddy. So what I'm doing is I took the red and I'm just touching the top, but mostly the bottom, and I'm just pulling it around my heart shape. And don't worry about getting it outside of the lines. Now, I, um, I usually fill out three quarters to a half of the heart with one color and then I'll go back and use another color. So I decided to do the top one red. Kind of catches your eye a little bit. And feel free to pause this and catch up. 
Now the only thing I did let dry was the background. So um, everything else is real time. Everything else is, is wet. So um, I just, I like the background. Sometimes on my projects dry because I didn't want it to mix in with my heart. So opposite side on the bottom heart, I decided to use red. And don't worry about going out of the line. The other thing to have is lots of cloths or napkins when you're doing palette knife painting because you didn't, when you want your colors to stay pure, you want to wipe off your, your palette knife a lot. And I'm wiping it off right now on just a paper towel. The other thing I have handy, and um, I may or may not show it to you here, is um, I wash them, of course, first, but I have some... I have kids and they have holy socks and instead of throwing them away, I wash them and I um, use them for my paintings. And I could just throw them in the wash again, but they are so nice to use for your paintings and you don't have to worry about, you know, what, how many napkins you have to use and, um, and they hold up so well when, I, when I'm using them for my paintings. So um, I try not to waste anything, I try to recycle stuff. So here I decided that I would do some yellow in the heart and I know what's going to happen is that red paint, so I hit that red paint a little bit and it makes an orange. It's really, it's really pretty. So that was kind of my goal is to kind of give you a, your eyes something to look at, <clears throat> but also to kind of get a little orange out of that. And I'm just, right here, I'm just using broad strokes with my palette knife to make it really interesting looking. You can just like scribble with it. You can put whatever um, colors on there. I just like to use those to kind of bring your eye to it and kind of um, step back from that background. Now, um, I'm mixing some warm colors which is which is the red and the yellow and the orange with some cool colors which is the blue and I mix and I tap the palette knife the bottom of it into that metallic purple so it's light sky blue and I'm just mixing the colors I'm hope yeah there we go now it's when it's mixing with that red it hit that red it's going to make a darker purple but is it, it's an interesting um, thing. So right now, what I'm doing is going around a little bit on the outside of that red line and pulling some of that color in. And it's kind of giving it an interesting little effect there. And I'm tapering the end off on purpose. Just kind of, I don't want them to be perfect at all. I want them to be really abstract. So same thing up here, I'm using the same colors to put the background in. And I am not mixing my colors on my palette, I'm just dipping that palette knife in a little bit with that sky blue and uh, that metallic purple and I've let that I've let that red stay on the palette. I never wiped that off, and I wanted it to mix on there just a little bit. Kind of give it a really interesting look. I'm just going around the edges. Now, don't worry if you get, if you go inside. It's okay. You could come back, and acrylic painting is very forgiving. I mean, you could wait until that is completely dry and go back over it again and define those edges. I'm trying to use the same colors that I used inside the heart, opposite sides on the outside, if you can see that. So I'm limiting my palette 
but it is also very interesting. It creates different hues by itself, so you don't really have to think about mixing those different colors. So here I put some metallic green and some dark green down together and I am just dipping it, my palette knife into it. Kind of went off screen here, but I'm trying not to mix too much with that yellow. And if it does, that's okay. I'll just make a different kind of green, which was really interesting. Um, again, let the colors mix naturally and your colors will remain nice and brilliant when you do it that way. It won't turn muddy. If you overwork it, it will turn muddy, but if you just let it happen on your on your painting, it'll it'll keep those nice colors. So here's where you take your time, relax, think about something else, and just let, let it happen, okay? Now you don't need to mess with it if you're happy with that. You don't need to put highlights on it or anything. Um, you could just do it like that and that'd be fine. Um, I went ahead and continued on. Okay, so I picked up that really dark green and um, I hit a little bit of the white on the way out so I can give it a little bit of a lighter hue. I was going for a lighter green next to that heart to kind of give it some highlights. And I did not mix it. I just tapped it, picked it up as I was um, coming off the palette. So I'm letting it mix naturally. <clears throat> And I'm just using, I'm not even turning the palette knife. I'm trying to keep it pretty flat to keep that color to, um, so it would flow and, and um, let the palette knife kind of pull it around on that board. Now that board that I'm using um, is not a flat board. So you can see some of the parts where I'm really trying to rub it in and it's because the board is is not flat. There's some raised areas on that board. So you probably would have a better time if you had, um, if you had like a, a canvas panel or a, a higher quality board. This was just something I had laying around that I wanted to paint on, and it was not. It was not completely flat. So I'm kind of. I'm kind of. Um, maneuvering around that fact. I, I realized that when I was painting it, my palette knife would go over it and I would leave little ridges. So right here, I'm picking up um, some reds and white. So I just picked up red and as I was coming off my palette, I tapped it in the white. You could probably see that on my palette, on my uh, paper right there, what I did. But I didn't want to mix them too much because I didn't want that to turn too pink. But I love how it mixed up there on the top naturally and made like a purple up on top. And I hit that blue again and it made another purple. So I really like the way that looks. Um, real abstracty look to it. So um, I just I just enjoy that. So I just left it naturally how it how it happened is is how I left it so and I know I um 
I didn't wipe my palette knife off. I just went ahead and picked up more paint because I wanted it to create different colors on the board. And remember, don't mix it too much. Don't play around with it too much or you'll have a big muddy mess. But I wanted my colors to remain brilliant, so that's kind of why I'm doing that. Now I'm wiping it off. And I'm going to show you how to kind of get those. You can leave it like that if you want. But um, if you want your heart to really stand out or you want your project, I'm going to line it with black. I do have some black metallic paint. And I believe I'm putting that on my palette right now and getting my paint out. A lot of the paint is very thick, so I probably sat there. Oh, I put a little bit of red in it, which is okay. So I got the black out and I just tipped that end of that palette knife with red and let it mix naturally on my board. And I'm just going around the outside edge with that dark, dark red and hitting a little bit of black and just let it happen. Now you don't have to do this part if you don't want to. You could leave it how it was. I just chose to make it kind of stand out a little more. Now if it's too dark, you could take your same palette knife and you could uh, scrape it back off. You won't get all of it off, but you'll get a lot of it off. And you can also make patterns with your, uh, with your knife or you can get um, like a toothpick and you can go through and make little swirly patterns or whatever you want to do. I've done that before and it's really kind of a cool technique. You, you um, make, take your palette knife and you make little swirlies and stuff in your, in your paint. So I think I'm going to demonstrate that. And then you can go back later and kind of just float the top of it with like a lighter color and it'll hit those ridges and really give it a really cool effect. So again, I'm here and I'm picked up the black and then I dip my paint into into the green just a little bit. You can see the top of my palette knife is green. So if you are liking this video and you want to do more of this kind of stuff, I have a palette knife group and I think the link, um, the link will be in the description. But if you're interested, it's $1.99 a year and we do projects like this um, all different types of the year. So you can start playing with palette knife painting. And you could do projects like this. You don't have to do it on a board. I mean, you could do it on paper, on in your in your art journals. Um, it doesn't matter. It's really an interesting um, way of painting, and um, I've really enjoyed showing people and and kind of relearning. I used to paint a lot when I was in college with palette knives and pastels and watercolors and different kinds of acrylics and um, I got out of it for a long time and I'm getting back into it so I'm kind of remembering some of the stuff um, going back and and as I'm doing it I'm remembering tips and so I thought it would be a good thing to pass on to people especially with the times the way they are now um, it it seems like people are going faster and faster and they don't slow down and and um, allow themselves to play around and explore like they used to. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of letting my palette knife kind of float down. 
I'm barely touching it and so I want it to kind of have that edge, that natural edge on it. So it's not a hard edge. I don't know if you can hear me. I think you can. <laughs> it's not a hard edge on your on your painting at all. So I'm trying to let it float down and kind of just look like it's it's just coming off the off your um, project a little bit. Like there's a shadow back there, imaginary shadow. So we're almost done. We're almost to the end. And you can embellish this however you want. I was thinking if you wanted to, you could write when it's dry, you could take a, your paintbrush or stencil or um, a gel pen or something and write on there. You know, whatever saying you want, um, you could also use mixed media to decoupage, you know, a saying on there. It just, it doesn't matter. I mean, this, this has a lot of uh, versatility in this medium. Just have fun, play around with it. You don't have to do any of those things. You could just leave it like that. So I recommend you go, you paint, pause this, get to the point where I am, and then restart it. Now I'm putting white on here to highlight certain areas. Kind of give it a little bit more dimension. And I'm using a lot of metallics. But you don't have to do that. You can use whatever you want. And you don't even have to put the highlights in there if you don't want to. I like the highlights. And I also, if you know, uh, you followed me before, I'd love to put gold or some kind of metallic around it, around the edges of my projects. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here too. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. Um, I hope you guys try it, and if you do try it, put it in the comments below that you tried it, and um, and put a picture in there. And if you try it and you post it on your social media, please tag me. I'd love to see what you guys do. So, again, thank you for watching, and I hope you guys uh, come back and watch more of my, my projects. Thank you very much. So as I'm finishing off, I'm just going around the edges and we are almost done. I mean, I'm kind of playing around with it, but I'm showing you different things you could do to highlight it however you want. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please share with your friends.